In this video, I'll expand on some advanced topics we've seen before, as well as cover new things that I haven't seen anyone use. Let's start with bleeding. Bleeding happens when something affects your result in an implicit, unexpected or straight up incorrect way. You may have noticed this with the aspect ratio, where changing it can make stable diffusion follow your prompt better or worse. For example, for selfies, I got the best results using a vertical aspect ratio. And for this face close-up of a woman running, I got better results on a horizontal aspect ratio compared to the vertical that gives me full body shots. There are a few things that may cause this, mostly related to model training. To understand this better, let's dive deeper into something I've slightly talked about before, concept bleeding. This is when a word or concept changes your results in an indirect way. Let's see some examples of what I mean. In this generation, if I add blue house to the prompt, you would expect something like this, but instead, the whole image changes. You can see it clearly in the image at the bottom right. Another example could be this apple. Changing it to watermelon makes the whole scenario different. Sometimes it mixes with the aspect ratio, like these running images that should be close-ups, but they aren't for a reason that we will see now. We need to know that AI doesn't really understand what stuff means. It just knows that, let's say, out of a hundred images described with the tag running, in most of them there was a human with this position, probably some hair motion, a specific type of clothing, etc. But if we look at Google, we will also see that the most running images are general shots, from afar. So it's likely that even if we humans understand that running is an action and it has nothing to do with distance to camera, the AI could have created a slight tendency to create full body shots when asked for running images. This will depend on each model and its training, but all models and words have concept bleeding to a certain extent. Not all bleeding has to make sense. There is implicit bleeding, like running, that makes sense that it creates full body shots because to show that someone's running you have to see their full body. But there is also unexpected bleeding, when a word and the result changes aren't really connected in a way that we understand. For example, this apple image I used before. When I change the prompt to watermelon, the expected result should be something like this, right? But instead, we get a whole different table and scenario. Why? Well, it's hard to know. We should look at all images regarding watermelon and compare them to apple images. Good news are that I'm gonna teach you how to find these concept bleedings and more importantly, how to combat them. Looking at an example I saw on Reddit, this random stranger was having trouble creating post-apocalyptic city interiors, as all results were cityscapes. You can probably guess why. First, I'll put their prompt and generate to see what it does. Trying to choose the same model, which I'm guessing was Edge of Realism, we can see that, as they say, it's all cityscapes, or at least exterior photos. So let's use the same seat and change the prompt. This time, we can probably tell that the concept causing this is city, as in order to show a city, you usually would choose an exterior photo. So let's take that out and generate again. Now we can see that with the word city out of the prompt, it is 100% of the time's interior photos. Okay man, that's nice to know, but I still want a post-apocalyptic city with an interior point of view, you know? Don't worry, it's time to see how to combat concept bleeding, and not only how to avoid it, but also how to use it in your favor. Prompt editing is the ultimate tool for this. If the problem is that city is affecting the composition of the image, then why not add the word city once the composition has been decided? That way, we could create the interior first and then change what we could so it seemed like it is inside the city. To do that, we just approximate when the composition will be decided, which is usually around step 3. Let's generate and we can see that even though it kind of worked, in this case 3 is a little too early. So let's try 8. Now it created the whole room and then added a cityscape on the windows. Let's do that once more to show it wasn't luck. Here we have the running prompt and image, and we don't want to change the aspect ratio to fix it. So let's try to do the same thing. This is the image taking the concept out of the prompt, so no running, which creates a close-up. And then, adding running at step 3, let's us create the close-up first to then make it look like she's running at the same time by changing minor aspects like adding motion to the hair. Same thing with the blue house and the watermelon. How about removing the concept? Can we use concept bleeding to our advantage? Yep, let's see. First, find a word with a strong and predictable concept bleeding, like heterochromia. We can see that usually these images are close-ups. Then we can add it for the first three steps and remove it before it starts affecting the eye color. Without the word, without prompt editing, 
and with prompt editing. Another bleeding related topic is something to be aware of. If you've been generating images for a long time, old prompts may be bleeding into your new ones. For example, here I generated batches of different characters. By dragging this into PNG info we can see it more clearly. The first prompt of the batch was Aqua, who is pretty well done. But later on the same batch I tried to create Ayanami Ray, who is supposed to look like this, but instead has some components of the last character. I forced these examples using a common bug, but if you see that some of your old prompt components are getting into the new ones, just restart the web UI user .bat file. And now that we were talking about prompt editing, let's get into this second tip. Things will go faster from now on, I promise. <laughs> you normally use this when you're thinking of mixing stuff together as well as the things we've talked about before. Now, there's a pretty cool way to use prompt editing that allows us to create really hard to describe images that would usually get lost in the prompt and that the stable diffusion wouldn't really understand. The main idea for this is to create two completely different prompts. The first prompt will define the overall shape and composition of the image. It should be a prompt with a predictable result. For example, I know what type of images the prompt top view of a bowl of soup will create. Knowing it, we can now turn this composition into the next prompt. A hole, a bath, a town, pretty much whatever you want. I would suggest looking for the first prompt alone first, without any prompt editing. I interrupt the generation if it isn't creating a good composition, as there's no need to let it finish. Once you find a prompt that gives you what you're looking for, add this second part at a step that you think fits what you want. Usually, this works best at less than 25% of the total steps. This is as powerful as your imagination allows you to be. My imagination ain't that great, so I made this example. Taking a flower pot prompt and changing it completely to fireworks at step 9. Changing a donut for a portal like these two cases or getting an ice cream cone to be a Minecraft mountain. Some of this you can create prompting normally, but it is usually really really hard. For example, I tried a normal prompt for the fireworks generation and all I got was this. Some other stuff I experimented with using prompt editing was changing a word strength mid prompt instead of completely erasing it. It can work, but I haven't found a real use for it. Also, I've tried this with Loras, and to my disappointment, it didn't work. I thought it could be really cool to avoid this uh, overbaking of Loras, but turns out Loras don't really care about prompt editing, they just do whatever they want. Let's go to number 3, seat variations. This is the little tick you have on the right of the reuse seat icon. Once you activate it, you will find these 4 parameters. It serves as a way to create variations of your result. It will create a new noise and mix it with the original one you have. The effect of this new noise will be weaker or stronger depending on the variation strength. And the variation seat is the seat of this new created noise. Then the resize seat sliders do some weird stuff by cropping the noise and whatever, but I don't think it matters much. First, the main use for it would be to create variations of an image that you found and like by freezing the seat and iterating over it with this parameter. Depending on how much you like the original image, you can go higher or lower. I usually stay at less than 0 0.2, like this. I also like using it with scripts. If I have a prompt that makes me consistent good images, I can activate this, put it at like 0 0.15 strength, go to scripts and make it generate a bunch of different seeds. I would put just random all the time, but for tutorial's sake I'll put seed 1, 2, 5. After a while you will have the number of images you wanted with the respective variations based on your batch number. I put it at 4 because that is what my GPU is comfortable with. Try keeping the resize sliders at 0 or at least match your input size. If you know a way to use these sliders in a different manner, please let us know in the comments. Thank you. And for the fourth tip we have break. I have talked a little bit about this before and it can be pretty useful. Adding break in all caps would be like telling stable diffusion, hey stop reading, pause, take a deep breath and start reading again from this point. You know that up here says x out of 75? Well this isn't the max length of your prompt. If you keep going it will go up to 150 and then further and further. These limits are chunks and stable diffusion separates prompts by chunks. How this works on a technical standpoint I have no idea. <laughs> I just know that you can use this to get better color positioning and sometimes making stable diffusion understand your prompt better if they are getting too complex. Adding break before you add a new color on your prompt usually helps to avoid stable diffusion, putting colors wherever it wants. Like in this case, you can see that even if I set green hair or blue eyes, it all gets lost and it's just red or orange. The results with break, however, are much better at understanding where each color goes. In this other example, it didn't do as good of a job, but it is still better than not using it. 
You can also use break if you feel like stable diffusion is ignoring a part of your prompt. Here I looked for a pretty difficult image and the prompt got long, which made stable diffusion ignore some parts. There isn't any dogs for example, and the wings are usually white instead of black. Adding break you can see that it tried harder to put everything I asked for in the image and the results are way more consistent. Last but not least, N. Another word that when used in all caps has a weird effect. I'm not precisely sure on how this works as all the information I could find online was this. Yeah, I, I think it makes one generation for each time you add ants to the prompt and then it tries to mix all of them into one single image. If you use a high batch size, you can actually see this happening. Here I use four ants, so we have four of the same image. Here three and here two, matching the times I used ant in the prompt. But I still have no idea how it chooses to mix them together. Going wild with this can be tough, so be careful. After a lot of experimenting, I found two main cool ways to use this. One is to create weird designs, and it is really good at that, honestly. Mixing donuts and crowns, creating this, or an ice cream and a dress. I don't know. To be honest, whatever you imagine. Play with it, it is fun. Oh, and this works with Loras too. Like here, I mixed a controller and Melania from Elden Ring. By the way, yes, you can actually achieve similar results using prompt editing, but I personally think it is better than, for example, the vertical bar method, because it is important to know that by adding two dots and a weight, like for example 0.4, without any brackets by the way, you can tell Stable Diffusion which part of the end should be prioritized, which gives you good control over stuff and it is the main reason why I prefer this method. The other cool use is for environment setting. For example, here the prompt was a woman holding wine. Then I added and a wild forest to change the background. Here I prompted for a woman dancing underwater, but it always creates these splashes under her, which makes no sense unless you're in the SpongeBob universe. I think and underwater, deep ocean for example, actually changes the scene better, even if we are losing some of these cool lighting effects, but we can recover those later. It may not always work, but it is something to keep in mind for sure. As thanks for staying until the the end of the video and while you go see this video down here, this is an extra tip. You can drag an image to your positive prompt and the metadata will automatically be added. Then just click this blue icon right here. Hope the video helped. See ya!